Hello, my name is Neil Knight from Skyway Software, and in this screencast, I'm going to take a little deeper look at the iPhone web scaffolding functionality in My Clips for Spring. Now, in a previous screencast, I actually went through the scaffolding process, and if you recall, I created an, uh, a Spring Webflow, Spring MVC, Adobe Flex, and also an iPhone web application. I'm not going to repeat that process here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and jump in and take a look at some of the more more of the details, or specifically around uh, the iPhone web. So uh, to start with, this is what the application looked like from a Spring MVC and Spring Webflow and Adobe Flex you know, perspective. So this is just a kind of a sample of what it looks like from a desktop browser. And one of the things that you'll notice from the dashboard is that there isn't specifically an iPhone web uh, panel here for selecting the iPhone web application. The way that that's actually accomplished is by taking the exact same URL for my uh, desktop applications and popping it into a browser that can emulate the, uh, the iPhone user agent or browser agent and I type the URL in there and now I'll actually see an application that's rendered to uh, a web application that's rendered to look like an iPhone application and all of app the functionality that's available to me from the desktop application is also available to me from the um, iPhone web application. So I can go ahead and take a look at a list of my customers. I can pick a certain customer, look at the details for that customer. I can, for example, drill down into its relationships with, with in this case, with payments and see all of the payments, look at the details. I can edit them, I can delete them, etc., etc. So that's basically what the iPhone web application actually looks like. Now let's take a look at some of the implementation details that was, uh, that was scaffolded uh, by my Eclipse for Spring. So once again, I'm taking a look at the project that was scaffolded in a previous screencast. So if I open up this project, uh, there's a couple things to uh, point out. The iPhone web application is actually using Spring MVC on the back end. So if you were to actually refer to the Spring MVC scaffolding video, a lot of the details in there will apply to the iPhone web application. So that might be a worthwhile screencast for you to take a look at. Um, but some of the differences are, first and foremost, uh, in order to support the iPhone um, uh, UI resolution, um, what we've done is we've actually generated into the web context file uh, several view resolver entries and one specific entry is responsible for looking for an agent substring called iPhone and if so then it's going to direct the uh, the uh, Spring Framework or the Spring MVC Framework to go ahead and use pages that are within this subfolder web inf iPhone and we'll take a look at that next. So if I actually open that up and web root web inf and I go into iPhone here you will see all of the individual pages that were specifically rendered for a mobile device. So they're going to be smaller, they're going to have different CSS. As a matter of fact, the specific CSS that we're using, um, or the framework that we're using for the UI, is iWebKit. And iWebKit's available for free download, and what we've done is we've generated an application using the iWebKit framework. And what we have here are all of the individual JSP pages that, that implement um, the, uh, the style and the look and feel of the application. Um, a couple other things to note is that, are, is that we're also using Site Mesh for, uh, just like we use it for the Spring MVC implementation, we're also using it for the iPhone web implementation. And what we specifically have here is several um, components that are the iPhone equivalent. So this is the one that's being used in the standard desktop Spring MVC, and this is the one that's being used in the iPhone uh, uh, web implementation. And if I go down to the site mesh decorators, you'll also notice that I'm using site mesh decorators that are specific to the iPhone. So if you're interested in taking a look at more detail into that, you can as well. The final thing to point out is that we actually have um, in the site mesh.xml file an entry here that handles um, what decorators should be used uh, if the user agent matches iPhone. So that's pretty much it for the iPhone web. Those are all of the major differences between Spring MVC and iPhone web. If you would like to give my clips for Spring a try, you can download it at the following URL. And uh, you're also welcome to follow us at, at Genuatech on Twitter and or 
at Skyway Software on Twitter, and there are several screencasts available on the My Eclipse for Spring YouTube.